एंड वेलकम टू इंडिया एनर्जी वर्ल्ड आई एम सुधीर एंड वी आर एट द इंडिया एनर्जी वीक वंस अगेन टॉकिंग टू नन अदर दैन मिसेस इंदिल कुमार इज द डायरेक्टर पाइपलाइंस ऑफ इंडियन ऑयल वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू ऑन आर प्लेटफॉर्म सर लेट मी बिगिन दिस कॉन्वर्सेशन बाई ट्राइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड फ्रॉम यू वट्स योर ओवरऑल सेंस ऑफ द इंडिया एनर्जी वीक दिस इंडिया एनर्जी वीक दिस टाइम इज इट यू नो वट आर द टॉप टेक अवेज दैट यू हैव एट सो फार नंबर वन दिस इंडिया एनर्जी वीक विल बी फोकसिंग ऑन द एनर्जी ट्रांसिशन पर से एंड ऑन द डिफरेंट एनर्जी सिनारियोज वेयर इंडिया विल बी फोकसिंग ऑन देल बी एडेड स्ट्रेस ऑन हाइड्रोजन द इनिशिएटिव ऑन बायोफ्यूएल्स एंड रेन्यूएबल्स एस्पेशली एंड see between the last year and this year uh, we have a uh, definitive focus on where we want to be how we want to achieve and uh, where are the investments uh, going to come okay so uh, that is the difference between the last in, uh, india energy week and this time and uh, this time i find uh, uh, it uh, the, the venue and uh, all the arrangements to be more integrated i think this will be uh, both at the level of participation exhibition and the uh, uh, focus is uh, uh, i think uh, much more uh, than what it was last year so you are all, you are handling the pipelines division now i want to understand from you uh, uh, you know the kind of demand growth that india is going to have over the next few years you know it's humongous uh, from a pipelines point of view are we ready uh, how ready we are and what are the what are the specific things that we are doing to ensure that you know that we are able to cater or at the right time with the right level of efficiency to that kind of burgeoning demand that we are likely to see see a pipeline is an infrastructure uh, which uh, has to be well thought of it has to be planned uh, so year upon year in advance uh, because that is not an infrastructure you think of and you, you have it up and running the next day uh, so lot of thought has been gone and see the, um, uh, almost all the omcs we have Uh, and every year capex review of uh, the where the demand comes and uh, how we are going to see that uh, we are going to the, the logistics part uh, basically a pipeline is the best way uh, to handle logistics of uh, fuel movement so the, we have the road maps and that is the reason why we have scaled up today indian oil itself has more than 20000 kilometers of uh, liquid pipelines and we have uh, uh, road maps for the next 5 years Uh, based on the demand a growing economy uh, means a growing uh, energy demand and uh, as you know the per capita per capita energy consumption uh, in india is uh, very very low so we foresee that there will be much energy demand and the demand uh, will in the next decade come from uh, those areas which are developing because uh, uh, we have a middle class the, the, that is moving it's upwardly mobile you can look at the uh, figures in the car sales and the two wheeler sales uh, and we are very upbeat and um, uh, there's much focus on the national gas grid uh, ultimately the national gas just like the golden quadrant related national gas grid also is all the verge of completion with the northeast gas grid and um, a lot of pipelines being laid in the south of india so ultimately that vision of a uh, grid is going to mature soon and once that is done uh, uh, there won't be a problem of importing gas either in the way east or west coast because once uh, the grid is complete so we are very upbeat on it okay uh, so there is also a lot of talk about technology these days right and and people are talking about how ai and ml and things like that overall digital innovation you know how is that changing landscape and that's a very fast changing landscape right you know how is that going to impact our energy companies and their operations from a pipeline point point of view right how do you look at it how ready we are and what are the uh, you know at the at a level of company how is ioc leveraging all of that the latest technological advancements that are available for betterment of its uh, operations good an a model to work the first the, the raw feed for an a model is data at least in indian oil we have data on all our operations and maintenance uh, for the last two decades 
Now is the time we are going to uh, reap dividends on that humongous data that we have collected. For example, uh, in Asia we are uh, implementing one of the biggest uh, information management systems in pipelines. We have called it uh, the Central Pipeline Information Management System, CPIMS, and that is going to be commissioned uh, very soon. Now, uh, this will give an insight in, into all the operational parameters all over Indian Oil's 20,000 kilometer pipeline network. For example, uh, uh, the, the model will be able to analyze for a given set of parameters of speed and velocity and density, uh, what are the effects on energy. So once that is available, the optimal use of energy in all the pipelines can be done within no time. That will be an enabler for improving our energy efficiency, number one. And number two, on our safety and uh, uh, reduce the chances of error in operation. So I think the dividends will, um, uh, Indian Oil will be able to reap dividends within a year. So that is one part. The other part of the technology intervention uh, is in the areas of uh, reducing our uh, Pilferage, uh, yeah, PI, what we call pipe and intrusion incidents uh, and accidental damage. We are also using technology to find out because we have had certain failures in which uh, rivers have changed course. So even in that we are uh, try, uh, using AI to find out if there is a tendency of uh, any water away to change course. So we will uh, take um, advanced measures so that we will reduce accidents. These are very few. Apart from that we have several initiatives in uh, uh, rotary machine maintenance, predictive maintenance, and prolonging the use, energy efficiency. So uh, we are very upbeat on uh, introducing AI. So the other uh, important topic you talk about these days is sustainability, right? There's a lot of focus on clean uh, growth, right? Particularly, and that you know that uh, that focus is more on uh, large energy PSUs, right? Uh, there's a lot of uh, you know, so so there's a sense of responsibility also that exists, right? Uh, to bring about a lot of shift towards clean uh, energy. Now, I want to understand uh, at the level of pipeline division in IOC, right? Uh, how is uh, how do you look at sustainability? How do we ensure that you know uh, that the the footprint of the uh, the growth and you know the expansion work that we do uh, is uh, is positive and and it's sustainable in the long run? How do we how do we see by it? DNA uh, pipeline is the mode of uh, transportation which is the most sustainable by, by DNA. But apart from that, uh, we are making sure that we leave as less of carbon footprint in all our operations, even in construction, uh, in maintenance. Uh, as I told you, um, uh, uh, for example, uh, we have uh, uh, constituted committees to find out uh, the total energy consumption. We are going to uh, use as much as green power as possible. Uh, renewables we are investing, and uh, the green cover because, uh, as, as I said, uh, laying a pipeline today, we are choosing the roads of uh, pipelines in such a manner uh, that it has a least damage to the forest cover. And uh, at uh, most places, we are trying to reduce uh, the right of way uh, from uh, uh, the, the traditional 60 feet. We are trying to reduce it to. Uh, even uh, at some sections, 30 feet, uh, so that uh, the damage to environment is minimal. And another initiative is we are uh, taking uh, measures to see that uh, uh, the, there are very, very less chances of a leakage in the pipeline. So, uh, pilferage being one of them. So I think we, the, these are the measures that we uh, uh, take to see that uh, the transportation by this pipeline is sustainable and um, uh, as the least damage to the environment. Okay. So as somebody uh, who is an expert in you know, pipeline, uh, whether it's oil or gas, overall pipeline related issues, I want to understand uh, uh, when you try and envision the future of pipeline transportation in the energy sector, what are the top two or three trends that come to your mind? You know, what are the top two or three trends that will take over the future of pipeline transportation development in India? Uh, two parts, one is on uh, liquid fuels. Uh, in liquid fuels uh, on pipeline transportation, uh, efficiency will come in uh, when you have more advanced logistics. Uh, logistics, I, uh, I mean, um, uh, like uh, forecasting demand, forecasting demand, uh, and um, because the pipelines inherently are uh, multi-product. 
So the handling of the interface, handling of the interface has to be done judiciously so that you have the least uh, storage, but at the same time uh, you have uh, less of interference. Uh, so that is one area, and um, uh, the future, um, I think. Um, uh, the, the time taken to move products uh, from one place to another, that will be a big challenge. Okay. Uh, especially because um, uh, we have more highways developing. So okay. I think smaller pipelines uh, connecting to demand centers. Uh, so there is, you're saying there is increasing competition from other modes? How, one is that and um, th th there is also, see uh, for example, uh, because I said uh, uh, on liquid, like in LPG we already have an example. Because see, there are um, uh, with, um, almost uh, 100 of the, the depots of Indian oil. So we have this pipeline, Kanla Gorakhpur pipeline, where all the three OMCs have come together. Because uh, it wouldn't be uh, economically viable for one OMC to lay a pipeline. So we have come together, uh, Indian oil, HPCL and BPCL. Uh, so we're going to commission this Kanla Gorakhpur pipeline, which is going to connect 22 bottling plants. So that would be the order of the day, which is already existing in gas. Uh, gas pipeline, uh, it's tariff based. So anybody lays a pipeline, so the model is uh, the revenue generated by the tariff. So uh, this could be, or this is going to be uh, the way that pipelines will be. And finally, uh, the cost of RIU, and uh, there is increasing reluctance uh, of public uh, from the farming community and the most of the public to give uh, right of way to pipeline. So that means uh, with so much hindrance, it would be more prudent to have a, a common corridor in which all utilities, which may be a gas pipeline, an LPG pipeline, a natural gas pipeline, even buried power lines, uh, which could be the order of the day, especially in terrains which are very difficult to negotiate technically and um, costly because of the acquisition. And third, so the capacity is not wasted, yes, right? Uh, yeah. Because of my money, the cost uh, is less of uh, moving uh, any uh, utility. And uh, thirdly, uh, in places where uh, probably safety is of utmost importance, then it makes more sense to have a common corridor because uh, ensuring safety of a common corridor is much better than ensuring it individually. So overall partnerships, working together, that is that is the future? Collaboration is the key. Collaboration is the key. Is the key. Okay. Not only among the OMCs and the operators, but within the regulatory agencies and the government. Because ultimately, the motto of every energy company is to bring equitable energy all across India. That is the motto. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, that brings us to an end of this discussion. And it was great to have you. Thanks for your time. Same here. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much.